Statements made by United Traders, UT, or its members are opinions and not investment advice. UT is not responsible for any investment decisions made using the information provided. Improvements are not guaranteed. This material does not take into account your particular investment objectives, financial situations, or needs, and is not intended as recommendations appropriate for you. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned on UT. So now we take um, the fans into consideration. I think one more. There's spirals and arcs, and there's also time extensions. We're starting to run a little short on time. Um, time extensions are really only for points of consideration. I don't consider them accurate. Um, you can look at them for, if you're in a trade for a long period of time or you're anticipating being in a trade for a long period of time, what might happen around a certain area when you get a zone line at certain ratios. Typically, I found that it can take um, a few days or even sometimes weeks, depending on your chart, uh, before anything actually happens there. Um, but let's get into what I want to show you here. All right, so this is a Fibonacci spiral. This is the true Fibonacci art uh, in terms of how Fibonacci works from the exponential math. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Two plus three is five. Um, three plus five is eight, and on, so on and so forth. It's an exponential mathematical calculation. So if we take the smaller and work it out to the larger, I want to take the first period low. If I move it to the first period high, I just stay consistent with the theme in the fan. Do I see areas of interest on the uh, Fibonacci spiral that I should take into consideration? Okay, maybe, right? Possibly, again, possibly. These are cycles. They're only areas of interest, things to take into consideration. And you can do a billion of these on the chart. Again, I don't use them other than determine potential points that they might have a cycle that could recur, uh, recur itself. This thing was on a, a really serious uptrend, a really nice tear. Um, you can also go from a period high to a low. So we already charted the low to the high. We'll go to the high to the first period low. In fact, I'm going to do this one. We kind of see overlapping zones. This would have been an area right in here that I would have been taking note of what was going to happen next. Is it going to stay along this, this fan line here? Is it going to pull back or what? But I probably, me personally, would not be in this particular trade if I had already saw that you have overlapping arcs in this area until the market or AMD in particular told me something. It's a, a decision was made. And as we can see here, we still didn't know. I mean, weeks went by and we still held this level of consolidation here. It wasn't until it broke above it, out of this green zone that we drew here between the 50 and 61.8 that it told me it's time to go long. We've passed above the fan, passed above the 61.8. I can take a position. And I'm probably going to be selling in the hundred out and the in the hundred percent range and where the 50 fan hit. So I would probably be selling this candle, even though it broke above, my profit taking would have been definitely somewhere in this particular green zone. It's still a profitable trade. Can you always get more? Sure. Do you, is that your goal? Um, you set your goal, you set your threshold, you do your own risk tolerance. Um, I'm just telling you what I would do. I don't try to catch the entire move. I only want to catch what when I get confirmation from point A to point B, where I think it could go, and that's it. Um, so let me take the no, I'll leave them in there because there's not really messing up the chart because I do want to do a an arc. So what is an arc? I use it for time frame. I like it for time frame. It does help you kind of determine like from a period low to a period high. Let me show you. I'm gonna do the same exact. Thing. I have it coded the same way where the 61.8 is green, the 50 is yellow, and the 38.6, uh, I don't know what, 38.2, uh, oh, sorry, 38.2. I don't really use it for the 38.2. I'm looking at the 50 and the 61.8 every single time. And then on this little etchy pink thing out here, that's the 100. So that's 100% of the move in the cycle. Does it matter on the stock is the question. Well, if I chart, if it's using Fibonacci's and ratios at all, it should. We should see some level of at least 
movement correlation or interest inside of this particular spiral. Do we see that? We got period low to period high. Well, here's where we want to go. Here's the 50. It made it there. And when it got there, what did it do? Remember, we still have the fan to consider. Okay. And then we still have this green zone, what we drew off of the prior extension to consider. So now that we've made it this high, we don't have this red zone, this red candle yet. Where could it go from the period high if I want to take it short? Well, I've already got one confirmation from the Fibonacci extension I drew a box on, but I also now have the Fibonacci arc telling me that between the 50 and the 61.8 is right in the same exact zone that the 78.6 fan follows along. So now I've got overlapping areas with different Fibonacci's basically communicating to me as an individual trader, this is going to be an area of interest I need to pay attention to. Buying or selling, I need to look at it when it gets there. So it's a target. Does it go there? Yes. When it breaks beyond the, um, the 61.8, what does it do? Now, it could go to the 100, which is out here. But where? Where in the 100? Could be anywhere in the 100. As long as it holds this particular zone to buy, I would like it to go along the fan. That's why the fan is there. Because if it holds a 78.6 on the fan, which it does, it's even tested it right here, and finishes that cycle out on the arc, on the spiral, sorry, the arc is the next place I want it to go. There it is. All this indicates to me at the 100 now is that the, the move is made. It's done. Does that tell me where it's going to go in the future? No. This is expired. It's no longer of consequence. I don't look at it anymore. So that's a done finish move. I can now remove that because I don't need it. I can now do a arc to the downside. So I'm going to take a period high to a period low. You can draw it right in here if you want to, um, because at this point on this particular candle, guys, this is all you would know. You wouldn't know what's going to happen in the future, but you can still utilize the tools you have given to you from the green area. You had your test to the downside. Oh, I need to draw it from there. It's kind of hard to see because I drew that stupid um, rectangle in there. There you go. Okay. So now we actually come out and test not only the Fibonacci um, arc at the 50 line, this yellow line right here, but we actually reject against the 61.8 of the fan. And when that happens, this thing fails and pulls back into the same 50, but it falls inside that entire arc. Do you see how they just kind of made that move in a crest motion in the same time frame? That's why I said I use it for time frame to try to measure the future move. Um, once we get there, now the 61.8, this green one is the next level I want to pay attention to. What does it do after it gets there? Well, I've got the fan looking to be a trend line, if you will. I'm not going to call it support because it's not. When it breaks out the 61.8, I want to go to the 100 as my next target. But where at in the 100? Again, if I can see it here, I need to, I'll, I'll be bullish until I get there. Do I know what it's going to do? No. It could go up or it can go down. We see that it went down. I'm not in trade. I'm done. I've already taken profit all in here before I even got to the 100 because I know when I get to the 100, a decision has to be made. Now, it went up a little bit, but it came right back down and actually would end up stopping me out or taking away some of the profit that I had in it. So when you get to certain key levels, you're going to want to be selling, right? So when do I sell? When you get to key levels. And when do you buy? When you get to key levels, there's really no point in trading the noise in between because all you're going to end up with is just a period of consolidation. Um, so we test the 78.6 again, and up we go. So we can draw another uh, Fibonacci. And on this particular one, I could do a billion of them in between here, here to here, to here, to here, to here, to here. I don't want to do that. Um, what I would like to do is just focus on the bigger picture stuff here. This is clearly an overlapping Fibonacci area. Hit the 78.6, broke above the resistance zone. This was a decent move. Came all the way up to the 50, didn't hold, and failed. I want to draw that. 
So I'm going to draw that one because it's a defined move and then try to project out where we could potentially have gone in the future from here to here. Where do we go next? Okay, if that's the high, which it is, 50. Okay, now it moves up in the crest, tests the fan again, fails the fan, fails the 61.8. And where do we go from here? Well, here's the 100. But we also had that fan that it breaks above, and it broke above the res this particular support zone. So I'm now looking at this particular arc as simply a measure of time. From period A to point, period B, when do I get out? When do I take profit? Well, when it got out of here, when it broke out of the 61.8 arc here in the center, I didn't see a need to be in the trade until it broke above here. So I, the arc doesn't mean anything to me at this particular period of time. This arc, the 100 line, might. So when it breaks above the 100, do I start taking profit here? Most likely, okay, because the cycle is over from what I saw before. Can you draw a new one? Absolutely. Then go ahead and get rid of this one and so on and so forth, okay? If you guys want to see it over and over again, you'll see repeating patterns. Like I said, you can pick a billion of these. Your entire chart will look like a huge swirly pattern and it can get relatively confusing. Um, me, personally, I've done it so long that I can see them on the chart without looking, but I just leave them. I don't care because I can look right past that and see what I want to see when I'm looking at a stock. Um, so whatever you do, if you want to change the, uh, the size, you want to change the, the colors, if you want to get rid of them, if you want to change, you know, uncheck um, particular, uh, go here in the, uh, in the side and just uncheck what you don't want to see. Get rid of it. You could do that too. And I take the white circle out of the middle. But the whole thing is when I take a period low to period high and I see a recurring move, this is an overlapping spiral with an arc out here into April the 5th. What does that mean to me? Nothing other than around April the 5th, if a, if, if AMD happens, actually happens to break up and go all the way to 115 bucks a share, and I say it will, but if it does, Again, another period that I need to take into consideration, right? I have some overlapping stuff there. Where else do I overlap? Right here, okay? Right back down in the period of consolidation over here. This is helping me strictly for the time frame. That's all. If you have a defined measured move, you might say, well, you know, why wouldn't you just take it from this period here? You can. You can go from here to here. But they had a whole period of consolidation where it really didn't necessarily move up or down. It just kind of went sideways. So that's why I drew it from a, a more defined period low to a more defined period high. But I wouldn't say you were wrong for doing a whole bunch of arcs in here. It just, again, it looks convoluted. And it doesn't really help me set target for the bigger picture because the guys I'm trading against on this could be on the monthly, right? And if they're trading on monthly, what are they looking at on that same exact spiral in the time frame from period low right to the period high we can kind of see it i gotta move uh move the candle a little bit so a little tiny bit here there it is sorry mouse fingers okay i want to be looking right in here key moment imd if i'm out in the trade at that particular period of time monthly and the weekly, and I would assume the daily are all going to kind of overlap at a key, a key area of interest. So, um, do I know what's going to happen there? No. Do I want to be in the trade there? Probably if I'm hedged, but other than that, no, probably not. Um, again, this is just an area to be uh, to take into consideration when it comes to time frame on uh, the spirals and the arcs. And then the last thing would be the if you want to do the time ratios, again, like I said, they don't necessarily mean um, something is going to happen. But I can take a period low to a period high and see. So we did a period low to a period high. I'm using the same one here. Okay. And what would happen at 161.8? Do we have a decision? Looks like it. Okay. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. Move drawing. Blue drawing. Okay. Good. Um, now we can see it here at 
uh, 428.6. It starts to get a little bit asinine here. It's 685.7. Um, right. So once you get a move that's made outside of that, I don't know that I would necessarily consider. That's why I showed it to you last because I really don't use them. There are a few stocks that are very, very well known and traded that are parts of a lot of ETFs like Starbucks, for example, that I love Fibonacci's on. They tend to uh, work incredibly well um, on there and all the Fibonacci's. So my, my Starbucks chart, I don't want to show it to you, it's probably going to crash my computer. Um, <laughs> it's like a Fibonacci uh, nightmare come true. Like everything is all over the place, but it makes sense to me looking at it. 